Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, another e-drilling webinar. Uh, this webinar is called Advanced Well Control Volume 2 and is uh, uh, continuing from the Advanced Well Control Volume 1. Um, together with me I have uh, Rolf Rometveit, uh, our CTO, and uh, my name is uh, Morten Svensson, uh, Product Manager. Uh, maybe Rolf, you can take the uh, content of what we're talking about. Yes. Good morning or good afternoon, uh, depending on where you are. <clears throat> um, here you see what we are going to deal with in our webinar today. First, give a background. Uh, then we will discuss uh, the drill kick uh, situation, swab kick and uh, kick tolerance and we will visualize uh, some of these uh, kick types. Uh, also, we will go through the, the most uh, uh, usual kill methods and also do some simulations uh, uh, here. Uh, after this, we will circulate out the kick and, and discuss what will, uh, how the, the modeling can be used in order to assist uh, prior to this operation. And finally, we will uh, also discuss some items regarding operational well control related support. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can ask the questions in the question box in, in the in the GoToWebinar application. So, and we will take all the questions in the end. Uh, in e-drilling, uh, we have a long experience in R&D and technology development within well control. Uh, we focus on uh, gas kick development to understand and describe and model this. <clears throat> and we have had also a special focus on the most complex type of kicks, the, the gas kicks in all best drilling modes. We have been involved in, in a number of uh, different full-scale well experiments uh, uh, through uh, joint industry projects and also been studying the detailed processes in laboratory in order to describe the, the sub-processes and develop sub-models, which have been uh, an integrated part of, of the models which have been constructed. And we have also constructed the models and thereafter built simulators uh, in cooperation with our R&D partner, Sintef. Um, we have built uh, integrated life cycle simulation systems spanning from planning through training, forecasting and real-time monitoring and support. And uh, well control and pressure control is an important part of this system. We've also been uh, involved in uh, numerous well control studies. Uh, our first well control webinar uh, had a focus on the more fundamental aspects of, of well control, uh, the physics behind. It's important to develop understanding of the processes in order to have an overview of, of uh, how to handle the events. We went through well control modeling, well control simulations and uh, dived a little bit into the more fundamentals discussing different influx types, the effects of the drilling fluid used uh, during the operation, the gas migration process in water-based mud, and how this then stops in, in oil-based mud, uh, rapid flashing of dissolved gas, which is a specific, specific risk in oil-based muds. And also, uh, we went into then further to uh, discussing the kick and loss situation uh, and the risk associated with this, secondary kicks and finally we uh, did some simulations uh, looking at some specifics related to deep water well control. <clears throat> in, in our webinar today we will uh, also do some simulations which will illustrate uh, the various elements which we are discussing. <clears throat> the first element is, is a drill kick and uh, an influx will start when the bit penetrates into a reservoir zone with a flow potential. Uh, the pore pressure needs to exceed the wellbore pressure in order for the flow to start. Usually uh, a kick is associated with a drilling break due to passing from one geology into another and this uh, is uh, usually the first sign of a possible kick if detected. 
<clears throat> the flow into the well is governed by the formation properties, permeability and porosity, the formation fluid, gas or liquid, and the pressure difference between the well and formation, the so-called kick intensity. A drill kick can be quite creepy. It can be difficult to detect if the kick flow rate initially is low. And also, if the gas uh, enters into uh, an oil based drilling mode, uh, the solution will limit the gain and also delay the gas expansion. Another main type of kicks is a uh, swabbed kick. This is initiated due to a temporarily uh, underbalance generated from tripping out too fast. However, also negative pressure waves uh, generated during tripping into the well may also initiate uh, a kick. Uh, the majority of kicks uh, take place during tripping. So this is an operation where it's important to be uh, uh, very on alert. A swab kick <clears throat> has a concentrated presence in the well bore initially. And when we circulate this upwards, uh, gas expansion can lead to secondary kicks uh, if the hydrostatics uh, then becomes below the uh, pore pressure uh, further down in the well bore. Now we will have uh, um, a swab kick simulation. Yeah, so we have been running a simulation and we have recorded it as, as a video. And just kind of before we start to explain the plot that we are looking at is that uh, on the middle here we have the casing shoe pressure as the red line. Uh, on, on the green line here is the bottom hole pressure and the blue one is the, the pressure at the PWD tool. Uh, this red dotted line here is the uh, pit gain indicator showing that we are having a, uh, we are, we are uh, Losing, or we are kind of because of we are pulling the the drill pipe out of the well, we are getting a lower volume at surface, and, and we can see it looks kind kind of co consistent. We can also see here the hook loads where we are lifting up the string and where we are going down again, uh, and 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 then pulling up again uh, with the string, uh, yeah. So we're going to start it now so we can have a look at what's happening. So now we are just checking the pit gain that sees that it's consistent between the different stands. And we also have here uh, a, a visualization of the downhaul. What we see over here is the pressure profile uh, from the casing shoe and down to the bottom of the well. And the green pointer here is showing where the bit is at the moment. So now we went to uh, increase the speed and we started getting some uh, reservoir fluids or, or gas into the well. As you can see, we have this gas, the, the, red, the yellow one is uh, the gas going into the, the solution. Uh, and now you can see that we have an increase in the pit gain, even though we don't have a very much in decrease on the bottom hole pressure, we are getting a, a, a while we are pulling up, getting uh, gas into the well. Now we are stopping and we, we see that the gas is rather stable uh, down there because it's uh, oil based mud. Uh, and and uh, when we get to the next screen again, we see that the pressure is building up a bit after we, we, when we are starting to stop and when we have been stopping. So you see here that we have a, now we are checking also the pit gain again and we can see that we have had a, a, a gain on the volume instead of a, a, a losing volume. And you can also see that the, the time we spent pulling up one stand was much shorter than the other ones. Uh, and we are still, uh, since this is just kind of a uh, simulation for demonstration, we are st uh, pulling up another stand rather quick to see again that we are still uh, swapping gas into the well. So now you see that uh, uh, we are starting here soon to, to pull uh, out of the well. Uh, and we will see that we are gaining even more and we are getting more gas into the valley. 
but again, the, the bottom hole pressure is rather stable uh, while we are standing still, even though we are taking a lot of wind. The uh, pink color here is actually free gas, so it's coming in so quickly that the, the, the mud is not able to take it everything into the solutions at, at once. once. So now we have actually got a quite severe influx, as, and you see that we have had a very high increase on your orchid gain. I think we just uh, stop it there. We have kind of shown just the example on how it could look like when you do this uh, in operation. Um, then uh, we move over to the concept of kick tolerance, and uh, this is a quite important uh, concept. Uh, it has been discussed a lot, the definition of it, but it is not that complex. Uh, it's uh, stated here that kick tolerance, this is the largest volume of reservoir fluid that can safely be circulated out of the well without exceeding limitations for the weakest point in the well design. And uh, when you are designing for uh, how the well shall handle the kicks, uh, when you compute the kick tolerances, uh, advanced kick simulators should be used. Uh, such simulators take into account the, the realistic gas mud interaction, the slip of free gas, the slip versus the, the mud rate, and also the, the development of the gas distribution in the well through the circulation. And also effects of well inclinations, etc., will be taken into account. So uh, such models give uh, much more realistic results for the kick tolerance than simplistic models like single bubble models. Uh, the advanced kick simulators are less conservative uh, and much more realistic, as I said, still within safe limits. So <clears throat> now we're going to talk uh, briefly about some of the different uh, kill methods. Uh, and uh, we expect all of you to be quite familiar with them. We just want to kind of remind you a bit about them. And so we, we are going to start with the, the drillers method where you are uh, circulating out the gas uh, at a constant bottom hole pressure uh, in, or in balance to avoid more gas getting in. And when the gas is circulated out, uh, you are displacing your drilling mud with uh, kill mud. And there's, of course, there's also some pros and cons. And uh, the pros are it's, it's easy, it's rather fail-safe. And you, you don't need to wait to circulate the influx out. And this will help you avoid migration of the gas in the well bore. The cons is, if you, if you can call it the cons, it's time consuming. You need to, to have two circulation cycluses to get rid of the gas and to displace to the heavier fluid to keep the well in balance. We have done a simulation, and this is just a screenshot of a simulation that we, where we did, and, and we took a uh, influx, uh, a gas, a dry gas influx. Uh, in the beginning here, you see the gas right in, and we closed the BOP, and then the gas influx stopped. Uh, and you see that you, you, you have your pit gain from while doing it, and you also have your uh, shock pressure, and, and you also have your bottom hole pressure, and uh, casing shoe pressure and, and, and uh, increasing in the beginning here. And we are circulating the gas out and as, as the gas starts uh, reaching the surface it starts expanding so we get that increase in, your, in the choke and we also get the increase in the, in the return, uh, the mud return. And here when the gas is starting and it's getting all out we have a very large drop in the measurements of the fluid and we also have a drop in the, in the in the um, uh, shock pressure again. But we are st all the time keeping a constant uh, standby pressure. And if you look here, the dotted green line is the, uh, it's the mud weight. So at this point, we are starting to pump the kill mud after we have uh, uh, pumped all the gas out. And as you can see, the standby pressure is dropping as the heavier mud is going down the, the drill pipe. And when we have uh, entered the uh, Available with the heavier mud, we also see start seeing the drop on the casing pressure, and when the casing pressure reaches zero or, or, or nothing and the choke is to, totally open, 
we see that we have an increase in the bottom wall pressure. If we then go to the weight and weight method, which is a, a bit similar, uh, but the, here, here we weigh up the kill mud prior to the circulation starts, and, and we use the kill mud to displace the gas with a constant bottom wall pressure. And of course, this is also rather easy, and, and you do everything in one circulation cycle. But uh, the cons of our theory is that it requires the operator to calculate the pump pressure schedule prior to the operation. It takes time to weigh up the kill mud, and, and, and while doing all the preparations before you actually start uh, displacing the mud, the gas can migrate while, uh, while preparing and can cause other issues. And uh, we, to look at this, we also we ran the same simulations from from the form from from the Willows uh, the method, but now we 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 did use the wait and wait, and we we didn't wait uh, a long time before we started pumping the kill mud. We just uh, because the model of course calculates it for us, so we we didn't have that migration uh, aspect there. But as you see here, the same things happens here, but. Since we are pumping the kill murder already from the beginning, we see the drop in the, in the standby pressure while we are pumping the heavy fluid. And when all the gas is out of the well, we, uh, right afterwards. And we also see that then we drop the, the, the choke pressure. What is quite interesting here is that, uh, in, uh, is that at the same time, we, we have about the same uh, casing pressure and, and, and bottom up pressure uh, during both of the operations. And then over to uh, another interesting part is the, the bullheading. And this is kind of an operation that you do if, if you're, your bit is above the influx or you are far up in the well. Uh, and then you are pumping against the closed well to push the gas back into the formation. So, and this is also rather easy and does not require too much planning. Uh, but on the back side, this can lead to high pressure on the tubing, casing, and casing shoe, and there is a risk to damage the reservoir. And, and on the other side, you also don't know exactly where the influx will end up, and you can actually frack your casing shoe while doing it or, or anywhere else and, and not know exactly where the gas is. On this, we also made a simulation but this is a video as you see here we have gas into the well here and our bit, the bit is far up in the well so what we are starting to do now is that we are closing the the BOP of course and we have started pumping uh, fluid down the drill string and also in into the analysis we see the bottom of pressure is increasing as we are kind of getting up to a proper uh, rate and, and as we we'll slightly see soon that the, the gas will start moving backwards into towards the formation. So not too much movement, but, but there is a bit movement uh, now. And what we now we will in a second uh, in double our flow rate to, to uh, increase the the uh, pushing the gas back into the formation. So yeah, now we saw that we increased the flow rate, and we also see an increase in the bottom of pressure, and you see a more movement of the gas getting down into the valve. So I think we can just go to the uh, next slide. This was, this was just to kind of show a bit how we model it. And then we have uh, the volumetric method. Um, and this is also when you are not able to pump down the drill string. Uh, if, if the drill string is out of the hole or the string is plugged or it, it, the drill string is washed out. And we also, here, here we need the gas to be migrating. And what we do here is that we keep a constant pressure on the gas until it reaches the surface. So this is the post that is suitable when pumping is not possible. The, the, bad, the back side is that it's uh, quite time consuming. 
and there's a lot of room for making mistakes. And now we will uh, discuss uh, some aspects of uh, circulating out the kick. Uh, when a kick has been detected in the field, high fidelity kick simulators can be used in order to support decision making. The uh, characteristics uh, of the kick scenario from the field, uh, like uh, pit gain, uh, shut-in drill pipe pressure, shut-in casing pressure, all these can be utilized in further simulations in order to generate operational related advice and basis for decision making. Uh, and uh, examples of, of these are, are listed here. For example, uh, through simulations <coughs> we may see that the planned control procedure is not fully relevant or should be modified. So the, the simulation may suggest uh, a modified control procedure, for instance, a modification of the control flow rate, for instance. Uh, we can also uh, see what the maximal well pressures will be at the weak zones. Are we close to, to fracturing? Uh, or shall we take some action in this respect? Also, should we plan to reduce the slow circulation rate uh, to minimize these uh, fracturing risks? Another important uh, aspect will be when can we expect the gas to come to the surface? Uh, that can be uh, good information to have uh, on the rig. Uh, and also, what will be the expected gas rate out versus the capacity of, of the degasser? Uh, I'll take this uh, a little bit further uh, and uh, make it a little bit more general because uh, by utilizing uh, simulations through the whole kind of life cycle from planning through training through uh, operations and so on, uh, if you have the right kind of models, they can be used uh, for operational support. Uh, in the planning phase, uh, the models can be done, uh, can be run for preparation of uh, uh, hydraulics, well control uh, elements, kick tolerances, uh, various displacement operations, uh, casing, uh, running, and so on. Uh, and uh, you can use them to identify the risk elements. <clears throat> Then uh, we can do training uh, using the same uh, well configuration which has been used in planning and uh, then prepare uh, quite advanced training on a very uh, a realistic copy of, of the, the wheel well to be drilled. Uh, and also here we can use the same well configurations and, and save a lot of time in that respect because this configuration can move seamlessly from one uh, model to the other. During the real time, uh, during the real operation, we can also run uh, the modeling for support. <coughs> and in case of a well control incident, uh, the monitoring of the shutting pressures and pit gain can then be used further in developing advice, as I uh, discussed in the previous slide also. And uh, we can then use the data uh, uh, in combination with the simulator and do some history matching to make uh, the uh, kick development up to that stage uh, uh, be the same as uh, the modeling in the simulator and then simulate ahead the kill operation according to the chosen control method. And then we have uh, on our hand, at our hand, uh, data which can be uh, good support regarding for, for the operational people, regarding the control procedure, expected well pressures, gas to surface, peak gas rates, etc. Uh, additionally, uh, if this is a very uh, difficult operation, there might be uh, additional problems coming ahead in the operations and we can then uh, also utilize the uh, configurations in the simulator and do uh, further drilling in the simulator and test out various strategies, do forecasting 
and uh, what will be the weather for tomorrow or for the next operation. Uh, and then we can choose the most optimal strategy uh, ahead in the operations. So now we are uh, basically ready to have some questions. But before we do that, I will just start a video of uh, 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 influx simulation that we did for uh, uh, extended reach well. And what we are looking at here is that we have some influxes uh, that we already have taken into the well. Uh, this blue uh, triangle is showing the, the, where the hydraulic front of the bit is, but the green ones is actually some influxes that we have got in. Uh, and we got a couple of questions here, so we can start with them. Let's see. What about influx when pumps shut down and ECD pressure lost? This is third most likely kick scenario. Yeah, and that is a very common scenario, and this that we have a lot of experience with with training or with scenarios like that, where you actually have to do your operational procedures with doing a connection and you, you actually get an uh, influx at the same time. So that is a very good point. Uh, that, is, that is also a very common scenario that you are in overbalance as long as you, you are pumping and drilling, but as soon as you, you do the connection, you will get an influx. Yeah, and, and the models will, will handle this, this scenario also. Yeah, and when we, when we do well control, when control evaluation, we, we can set up scenarios just like that, where you are drilling and you, you are in overbalance, but you do a connection and you will get the influx. And there is another question. What is the kind of model inside the simulator? Uh, drill flux model or or mechanistic models based on mass and momentum conservation like Olga. Um, in our modeling we are using drift flux models. Uh, there are several reasons for that. One of the main reasons is that this is a kind of stable modeling uh, and uh, it's uh, also if you're using um, uh, the modeling uh, in, in Olga, then uh, there's a big uncertainty related to the momentum conservation uh, uh, between the different phases uh, because this is non-Newtonian fluids. The Olga has been developed for Newtonian fluids, a completely different scenario than, than the drilling. Uh, and they have developed good models, good verification data from full-scale experiments uh, in flow loops, but there are no such data available for the momentum uh, conservation uh, between uh, gas and drilling mode. So that's the reason. Oh, very good. So, okay, and uh, that was the two questions that we got. And um, and we, that's good. We are a bit ahead of schedule, and I think that's okay as well. Uh, I just want to thank you all for joining in to the webinar. And uh, if you have any other questions or you would like to have the presentation, you can email uh, Rolf or me uh, to get that. And our, thank, uh, our contact details are for all form of trade, it's uh, rr at edwilling.no and for me it's ms at edwilling.no. So feel free to contact us if you have any questions or remarks. So again, thank you for your time. Yeah, and thank you for your attention and have a good day or a good afternoon wherever you are. Yeah. Okay, thank you all. Bye.